Tonight's sports report is brought to you by True Value Hardware, your store of first choice. All right, the Cavs had their problems tonight. Yeah, this is tough, folks. Uh, sure Ramona's is. a uh, Michael Jordan fan and Bob's a Hersey Hawkins fan. Well, no, not yeah. exactly. I in, mean, I'm a Cavs in, fan. In the background. Yeah. In the background. Philadelphia 76ers blasted the Cavs tonight, 114-84 with Hersey Hawkins hitting 13 of his 14 shots for Bob for 28 points. That was the Sixers' fourth straight win. Rookie Winston Bennett led the Cavs scoring with 20. Brad Doherty's frustration must be building. He hasn't seen one minute of action this season, and it may be three or four weeks before he can rejoin his teammates. Well, that's not left up to me. Uh, I'd like to play now, but... Not able to, and uh, that's. I'm just going to leave it all up to the doctors and whatever. I'm going to do whatever they say to do, and just try to prepare myself as best I can because I really would like to play. I'm kind of tired of sitting around, and uh, I'm just leaving it all up to them. Whatever they say, I will do. The Browns will have to start getting yardage by running the ball for the last four games, and with two of the four in the stadium where the weather can play havoc with passing, it will be even more important. It's important to be able to run the ball, and I think we need to continue, though, with a good blend of running the pass. Our, our mixture hasn't been bad the last couple of weeks. We've been about 50% over the last two weeks running and passing. The, the key is we have, just have to, the times we do dial the runs, we have to be better at it. The line knows that's where it starts, so they, I'm sure they have the pride, and they want to go out there and do the best job they can and help us to get the running game going. I can see the mentality on the field and the intensity on the field where a little bit more than the past few weeks. And I think that's what they meant by they were really determined to go out there and, 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 and work as hard as they can. Offensive and defensive linemen got in a few punches of practice today. If Indians President Hank Peters feels pressure to make trades, he doesn't show it, and he could be in for a very busy week starting Monday at the winter baseball meetings. Jeff Phelps has more. Our story began October 2nd. The season ends and uh, everyone does an autopsy on their uh, uh, season. The Indians autopsy showed that yes, the team's offense is definitely dead. And the wheels start to turn about, well, how are we going to correct our problem? The Indians probable solution, auction off soon to be free agent Joe Carter to the highest bidder. And we have some preliminary talks uh, in early November. They have major league general managers meetings. Where the field of teams bidding for Carter is narrowed down to six or seven. And then the fires are really uh, starting to, to burn. And then by the time you get to the uh, winter baseball meetings, there have been so many preliminary talks that uh, everybody has a pretty good idea what they think they can accomplish. There. So hang on to your seats, Indians fans. Joe Carter will be traded next week in Nashville. And it's not 100% certain we would deal, Joe, you know. What? I've said all along that is an option. If it shouldn't work out, we can always just pull back and say, okay, we'll talk about this later on uh, during the winter or even uh, during the season. It's uh, probably in our best interest to do it now, but that's not saying it would happen. Okay, let's take a big chance and say the Indians do trade Joe Carter at the winter meetings. It could start the dealing domino effect for the tribe in Nashville. It is a table setter. Uh, if you do make a deal uh, and you get back certain position players that fill needs on the ball club, then that in turn tells you what other things that are still remain to be done. And we would then start to pursue the players that would fill these other positions. Translation, Hank Peters will be a very busy guy next week. Jeff Phelps reporting for the 10 o'clock news. Michigan's veteran coach, Bo Schembechler, is the Big Ten Coach of the Year. That's the UPI voting by coaches in the conference. Wolverines have a 10-1 record, a second straight Rose Bowl appearance coming up. Michigan also has its first outright back-to-back -back championships in 23 years. In the NBA tonight, the Indiana Pacers overcame an early problem, a Mark Eaton block, for instance, to set up a Utah basket, but the Pacers held Utah to just eight points in the second quarter. Pacers had 17 points from Chuck Persons. They ran their November record of 8 and 4, best in their history for one month in the NBA. At New Jersey, at Jersey tonight, Larry Bird had a Larry Bird night. 29 points, 11 rebounds. That was Boston's first road win in seven games. Bird kept firing in the second quarter to keep the Celtics ahead until Kevin McHale started scoring his 23. Nets have lost 11 of the last 12 games despite plays and hustle like that one. A two pointer for Charles Shackelford. In the National Hockey League, Montreal finally went at home after four misses. A nifty three-man passing show left the puck on the stick of Bobby Smith and a power play goal. Montreal Canadiens did it again in the first period. Another power play goal by Smith. Not a pretty one, but it did light up the red light, and Montreal won it 5-2. to two. 
the Seniors Professional Baseball League is such a hit in its first season in Florida that expansion's coming. It could come as early as next year, and the expansion will move to cities in Arizona and California. The eight team owners in Florida have already authorized the league's president to begin taking expansion applications. Now tonight's scoreboard. The Indians offered salary arbitration to first baseman Pete O'Brien. That means they can negotiate with him until January 8th. O'Brien has until December 19th to accept or reject arbitration. The Pirates have signed free agent pitcher Walt Terrell. It's for three years, a total of $3.6 million. He's a losing pitcher in his major league career. <laughs> He's got a million a year. Over him, it's a baseball insanity. <laughs> Thanks, God, I wish my arm didn't hurt. <laughs> I should have been a pitcher. There's more ahead in the 10 o'clock news. Stay with us. Sally's back with a recap. Well, I think we'll see a little bit of everything tomorrow. Some sun, some clouds, and even some flurries. High tomorrow, about 34 degrees. West side will see a little more sunshine. On the east side, I think you'll see squalls like you had today. They didn't really accumulate too much. In fact, I think one to two is overdoing it. Probably just a coating, if anything. Increase in clouds on Friday after morning sunshine and evening snow, high of 30. All righty, thank and winter you. Winter is here. You bet. <laughs> Profound state. <laughs> Thanks for joining us tonight on the 10 o'clock news. We'll see you tomorrow for the first look at news, sports, and weather. Good night.